Hello. Going to start off with a fairly brief video, I think, about an oddity that I discovered. Here's the oddity. And this tarot deck, um, I've only found one other mention of it anywhere, <laughs> actually. Um, and that is here on YouTube. And it was Lisa of Mindful Tarot. Excellent channel, lovely person. Um, go, and, go and look her up. And from about, I want to say, three, four years ago. And what she discovered, she had a, a, a deck from US Games, which said on the label that it was a Dodal Tarot de Marseille. And I looked everywhere, couldn't find anything. And then not that long ago, this turned up on eBay. And it is a sort of Dodal Tarot. But as I say, it is very much an oddity. Lisa's copy was distributed in America by US Games. This is, I think, the original edition of this, which was made in Belgium by Carter Mundi in about 1996. And let's have a look at it. Up the top card, and what it says here is this new Tarot de Marseille is based on the original deck by Jean Dodal, created at Lyon around 1700. Well, we know that Dodal was working in Lyon, I think 1701 to 1715, something like that. It says that the deck has been completely redrawn and coloured um, while respecting. The original drawings and then it goes on to explain the major and minor arcana and that's where it gets interesting where they say it's been completely redrawn and recolored let's take a look because here is le Mat, the fool in this quotes dodal tarot deck now for comparison I'm going to bring in a couple of other decks. One is the uh, restoration of the Dodal Tarot deck by Jean-Claude Flournois. And yes, during my hiatus from YouTube, I went there and got a copy of the Flournois Dodal. I make no apologies for that. And here on the other side, we have uh, the Grimo. Tarot de Marseille, as redesigned and recolored by Paul Marteau and published by Grumo from the 1930s onwards. And what you'll notice as we go through, for a start, um, you'll see that Le Foll in the Dodal original, quotes original, has been replaced by Le Mat, as in Le Mat on the Marteau Grumo deck. What Carter Mundi seemed to have done here is to take the Dodal drawings, redraw them a little bit, and in doing so lost quite a bit of their charm, I'm afraid, in, in, in my opinion. But then when it comes to the colours, they've given their deck the colouring of the Palmato Grimo deck. And they do that over and over. It's not 100% consistent, as we'll see. There's Le Bataleur. And interestingly, you can see exactly what they've done. You know, um, the blue, white, red on this tunic there goes to red and blue, red and blue. Yellow on the sleeves has gone in the place of the, the original colours. And they've adopted the Marteau. Grimo colours there too. I haven't quite done that everywhere and as far as I can make out, for instance here in La Papesse, where on the Grimo Marto deck down here there's, there's a big block of blue on her robe there, they've kept 
a bit of yellow from the original Dodal. As far as I can make out, when they do that, when they depart from the Marto colouring, it's for what you might call artistic reasons. And here it's just to provide, I think, a bit of contrast from this big block of blue. Um, did I say that right? Big block of blue. Yeah, down here in the corner on the Marto Grimo deck. Um, go through, same thing everywhere. Here, because the, for instance, the eagle on the shield is a solid block of black here, um, that is black ink, not stenciled over, and they've maintained that in the Katamundi deck as opposed to the yellow eagle on the Marto Grimo deck and so on and so on. Again, for sort of artistic reasons, for contrast, instead of having the Emperor's scepter with the orb on top as all yellow here, they've kept it yellow with a bit of red as per the original Dodal. Uh, and again, where the Emperor is sitting on this pink coloured chair and a pink coloured shield, for contrast, here they've made the shield yellow as it is in the original Dodal. And so we go through. There's there's one where we'll notice in a minute where it's fairly obvious why they've why they've made a change to the Marto Grimo colouring. Uh, when we get there, but you'll see that generally, like I say, what they've done is they've taken the Dodal drawing, they have redrawn it and they've applied the Marto Grimo colours. One thing to note on the redrawing is that one thing that the, the original Dadal is, is famous for are those wonderful big expressive dark eyes that all the figures have in, in them. Here, you know, lovely big black irises, black pupils there. Um, and I'm afraid that is the one rather lovely thing that the Cartamundi Dodal has got rid of. It's it's made the eyes, it's kind of modernised them, it's kind of made them more what I suppose you might call realistic. It's kind of lost the charm a bit. Um, the very stylized wood carving of the Dodal has been tamed um, in this Cartamundi deck and like I say it's lost a bit of charm there. I forget now um, when Lisa on Mindful Tarot did her review of this, I forget what side she came down on as to whether she liked it or not. I kind of do. Nobody, I don't think, would ever call it a pretty deck. And it does have its faults. Like I say, it's lost a lot of the charm of the original Dadal there. But I, I like it. And I think if you're a fan of the Marteau Grimo deck from the 1930s onwards, then... There's a lot in this that you'll like. Now here is the example where they've changed the Marto Grimo colouring um, for a fairly obvious reason because they probably came to came to the Hanged Man and said, no, that's silly, nobody has that colour blue hair. So they've kept his hair a sort of a yellow colour there. And you'll see that they do the same thing in, I think it's the star most notably. So yeah, like I say, if if, if you like the uh, Marto Grimo deck and its colouring, if you can find a copy of this Carter Mundi or in America this US Games Dodal, have a look. I like it. I do like it. It's not pretty, but I like it. Here in Temperance, you see that hair's gone from blue back to blonde. and so on and so on. All of which of course suggests the question, or rather it throws us back on the question, why does the Marteau Grimo have this colour scheme? You'll read in all sorts of places that when Paul Marteau went into the tarot business he found a deck from the mid to late 19th century that had this colouring and he applied the colouring and then later wrote 
his book, The Tarot de Marseille, in which he talked about colour symbolism and the gestures and positions of the characters and all the rest of it. Very famous book, only recently been translated for the first time into English. I haven't read that translation yet, but I have read bits of another translation in progress. It doesn't make easy reading, I have to say, trying to translate rather florid 1930s Gothic romantic French into English isn't easy at the best of times. And uh, I'm not entirely sure that Paul Marto was the most lucid of writers anyway. But anyway, that that's beside the point. You'll read that, you know, he discovered this, this mid to late 19th century deck, applied the colours, and then later wrote about the colour symbolism and all the rest of it. I have yet to find a deck from the mid to late 19th century and you know please correct me if I'm wrong but I've yet to find a deck that corresponds even roughly to Marteau's colour system here there are some from Paris I believe in about 1890 which are very different from the uh, say the Conver uh, colouring from Marseille in 1760 but even they don't, they're not close to, to Paul Marteau's colouring here. There are other theories around his use of colour to do with the different technology he was using. He wasn't using woodblock printing anymore. He was using um, rather more advanced industrial printers, but which could handle rather fewer colours. And I'm not convinced about that because you get very subtly coloured card decks from Italy from the mid-19th century onwards, he could have done it. So I still don't know, and I'm still not convinced by any of the explanations as to why Paul Marteau chose the colour system he did. What he did, once he had the colour system, was to put an esoteric interpretation on the colours. And here we come up against one of the most fundamental questions in tarot history. Was there, and to what degree was there, a series of esoteric meanings for tarot cards prior to the late 18th century? Did Jean Dodal in 1701 or whenever have esoteric meanings in mind for his cards? Were they designed um, very deliberately for a rather complex idea of divination. And you'll see in my videos, certainly from here on in, over and over again, I don't believe that was the case. I believe that up until the mid to late 18th century, card, tarot cards were playing cards, primarily, and that they weren't designed with any esoteric meaning in mind. They used stock images, images which had become habitual part of the tarot games, images which perhaps the designers had forgotten why they were in the deck in the first place. Because, you know, by this time, we're talking 1700, tarot cards have been around for, what, 250 years? It's, time to, it's enough time to forget where these images came from. Just as we now forget where the images of our kings, queens and jacks in our playing cards came from. Um, and we might look at that in a, in a future video as well. So, I don't believe, and I'll go into this in other videos, I don't believe that there is any particular esoteric meaning to be placed on pre-mid-18th century tarot decks, which isn't to say they weren't used for fortune-telling and divination. They absolutely were. I'm convinced they were, and we'll go into that as well. But Paul Marto, by the time Paul Marto came along, the esoteric tradition in tarot cards was very well established, had been for over a hundred years, and various people from uh, Etea, Papu, um, the Spanish chap whose name I've just forgotten, and <laughs> Oswald Wirt, and not least Arthur Edward Waite, had all come along with esoteric interpretations of the tarot. What Marteau did with his colouring was to say, well, 
here's an esoteric way of reading my Tarot de Marseille, and it's it's because blue, for instance, means something spiritual. Red means something earthly, um, and those colours are. are Th those associations for those colours are very ancient. You know, you'll, you'll find in uh, medieval texts that red is associated with earth and blue with heaven for obvious reasons. And so he said, you know, blue is heaven, red is earth, yellow is the intellect, green is nature, pink is the human factor. And he would he constructed the meanings of, of, of the tarot cards according to his interpretation around these interpretations, these esoteric interpretations of, of colour in his version of the printing. And so this US Games Katamundi Dodal can, if you like, for the most part, be read as if it's a Marto Grimo Tarot. The question is, which do you like better? Do you like the design of that better or the design of that better? I like them both. I like them both. I'm, I'm very fond of the Marto Grimo. I know a lot of people aren't because, of course, it changes the colours radically from any system that was being used in the 18th, any, any colour system that was being used in the 18th century. Um, so I know a lot of people have got this sort of slight grudge against the, the Marteau deck, but I like it. I really do. Always have done. You can, I mean, you can tell my deck is so old and scruffy. Um, it's been very, very used over a number of years. Um, compared, to, compared to the pristine condition of the the Cartamundi Dodal and the the Flonois Dodal there, but yeah, this 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 is the star of the show today. This rather odd, as far as I can tell, rather rare Cartamundi or in the United States U.S. Games version, uh, the recolouring mainly of the Jean Dodal Tarot of seventeen o one. Like I say, the only people I know who've got a copy are me and Lisa from Mindful Tarot. Never seen another one for sale. Never seen another review of one here on YouTube or anywhere else for that matter. It would be lovely to know if anybody out there has one. It would be lovely to know um, how common or how rare they are. I wouldn't be too surprised if on continental Europe they're not uncommon. Um... I wouldn't be too surprised because, of course, you know, the, the Marseille type tarots are much more popular on continental Europe, particularly France, Belgium, Switzerland, much more common than our uh, Anglosphere Rider weight uh, obsession. Sorry, I'm starting to let my political views of, of tarot cards get in the way there. But I think on, on continental Europe, basically, you know, the, the Marseille is the dominant pattern. And so it wouldn't surprise me if there's quite a lot of these around. They just tend not to come up for sale in English-speaking countries. Um, I like it. It's not pretty, but it's interesting. You can play with it as a redrawn 18th century deck, or you can give it a full-on Paul Marto esoteric meaning if you want or anything in between it's rather cool i like it uh, and i hope you do so i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching